Welcome to The Bottom Line, where we unpack some of the main business and economic stories of the day. Poland's space industry is taking significant strides to develop its position in the global market, and this year may be the year that it really takes off. One of last year's achievements was Creotech Instruments' contract with the Polish military for a constellation of observational satellites worth 120 million euros. Today I'm joined by Jacek Koszyc, vice president of the board at Creotech Instruments, to tell us more. Hello, and thank you very much for joining us in the studio. Hello. So, Microglob uh, is the first of its kind when it comes to big contracts uh, by a Polish space company for the Polish military. How many satellites uh, and what will be their capabilities and how fine will the resolution be uh, when it comes to what they will provide? Unfortunately, I can't uh, tell you uh, such details, how many satellites, but there are... Well, tell us satellites. what you can in that case. Yeah, yeah. Naturally, that's a, a constellation of a couple of satellites, Earth observation satellites in optical uh, range of electromagnetic um, uh, waves. So, uh, simply speaking, it's just a satellite to make pictures mm -hmm. of some objects on Earth. So was it quite a, uh, s uh, should we say, an achievement for your company when this contract came through? Yes, that was quite an achievement, uh, taking into account that uh, the value of the contract exceeds 10 times our yearly turnover. Mm -hmm. So yes, and we worked on uh, that for more than three years, so it's really hard work. Uh, and that's actually a beginning of another work now completing the satellites and actually the whole satellite system because mm -hmm. uh, those are not just satellites which are um, purchased by the, the Polish armament uh, agency but also uh, the other part of the system, the earth uh, station, ground station, then the whole processing chain of mm -hmm. the data. So that's the system. Will the satellites be able to spot individual tanks? Yes. Okay. So, but that's, that's uh, you know tanks are let's say ten meters, so we are below that. Okay. So and what about individual resolution. soldiers? Well, I can't. You can't tell <laughs> us yet. Tell you that. Okay. Uh, will uh, will it be possible to uh, develop further new satellites to the constellation? Yes. Certainly, that's our hope that uh, that constellation will be further developed. Uh, there is a, a good reason for that. Uh, the number of satellites in the constellation uh, is responsible for revisit time. So how often we can see uh, the satellite uh, in our uh, sky going around the Earth all the time. Do you plan to, to lobby the government uh, to upgrade it? I think that the best way to, to win uh, such a continuation of, a con of this uh, contract would be uh, a good performance of mm -hmm. our uh, satellites. So you hope to be in constant dialogue with the government? Yes, we are in constant dialogue already. Okay. Um, do you plan to actually sell this to other countries? We are planning to do that, but uh, as with any uh, products uh, in the area of military applications, there are always questions. Did your government buy such a product? Mm -hmm. And naturally, we couldn't prove uh, that, that uh, purchase from the Polish government until now. Mm -hmm. But we hope that in the future it would be easier to sell uh, such satellites uh, worldwide. Do you have any candidate customers as oh, yes. are you speaking to? Such, such, certainly, we, we are speaking with many, many countries. Are you able to, are you able well, to it's share? Far, far uh, East Asia, it's uh -huh. North Africa uh, and also South America. There are, there are also European countries interested mm -hmm. in, 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 in. So you're off to a great of, start. Uh, we hope so, yes, that, it, that would be a start for, for commercial uh, future. Okay, that's great. And what happened to the Eagle Eye satellites uh, and what is the future of the project? Yes, uh, the Eagle Eye um, uh, has been launched in, in August um, this year, still this year, yes. And we hope that um, uh, at some point we we'll recover communication with that uh, satellite. But we should remember that that was a prototype, that was a testing mission for our Hypersat uh, platform. So it performed well uh, for about a week and then uh, 
probably due to some uh, events in, in, in uh, the space, maybe, maybe uh, because of the sound burst or something like that, we lost the communication and then the satellite didn't uh, recover. We know what was the reason and we already, already um, implemented uh, that experience in, in, in the new um, platforms. Do you plan another mission of that kind? Yes, we do plan such a mission naturally. And do you have an, an idea of the timeline when you might next do that? Year, next year, there will be also a prototype mission um, consisting of three satellites. It's called Piast. And it's also, um, it's also meant for, for uh, military applications. But uh, let's say it's R&D project. It's not a, a fully, um, uh, let's say, commercial mission or, or it's not an exploitation mission. Mm -hmm. um, so Createch has been forging its way for 30 years. You've been hard at work for three decades. Do you plan no, no, to... No, no, that's no? Not, that's, that's not correct? Not the case. No, we are in that business only 12 years. Only 12 years? Only 12 years. Okay, so I stand But you're corrected. right. 30 years would be much appropriate for a space company to, to get to this, uh -huh. uh, to this level. Um, uh, but uh, naturally... Uh, it happens uh, quicker, uh, quicker in other parts of the world, mm -hmm. I, I should say. Okay. But anyway, uh, you've been hard at work, that's, yeah. that's for sure. But do you plan to team up with bigger players uh, on bigger projects? We are already uh, working with bigger uh, players uh, in different projects for European Space Agency. And naturally, there are different uh, talks on, on closer collaboration. But Naturally, I can't reveal that. Okay, so you'll have to come again yeah. <laughs> to the studio and tell us more. Um, there have been a flurry of announcements uh, from the Polish space industry uh, when it comes to research grants from the European Space Agency. How long does it take for those companies to climb up the ladder and to become as big as Creotech is today? So more than 200 employees. Uh, Not over the space of 30 years, only 12. Yeah. <laughs> I should clarify that uh, there are research grants from European Space Agency, but there are also uh, contracts. And uh, we won uh, a couple of big contracts, like the contract for um, DIAS, um, this, that's, an that's an infrastructure for, for the Copernicus um, program, data processing, mainly space data processing. And that was a contract of, of about altogether 17 million euros. So, and that was a contract. And we were uh, winning uh, that contract against big players. Mm -hmm. yes. So um, I hope that other Polish companies will be able to win uh, such significant contracts. And I think that a couple of those are already, those Polish companies are, are already mature enough to, to, to win such contracts. Uh, regarding the Polish launch industry, so uh, two teams are developing rockets, but they are meant for small uh, payloads. Uh, and the industry trend is to focus on big rockets like uh, New Glenn, uh, and SpaceX is working on the Starship. Is there a business case for these projects? For the big ones, certainly yes. Mm, what certainly about the small yes. ones? For the small ones, you know, well, we'll see uh, so-called new space, um, uh, which was based on, on smaller satellites, uh, smaller payloads. I think that it's a bit now, um, uh, let's say, uh, back because uh, uh, well, there was no business, no good business in, in delivering uh, many small satellites like CubeSats, maybe 10 kilograms or less. But uh, suddenly uh, there is a trend and we can see, for example, SpaceX is, is going for bigger satellites mm -hmm. now that uh, is more just more economical, uh, more, more um, financially viable. And I think that uh, that's quite understandable. Mm -hmm. One of the things bigger, that... Bigger scale, of better, course, better yeah, economic yeah. results. Of course. Uh, one of the details that catches our attention is uh, Creotech's collaboration with uh, SpaceX, and obviously SpaceX is associated with Elon Musk. Can you tell us uh, more about how this collaboration came about and how it's going? Well, we were, we were approaching uh, SpaceX through um, uh, its brokers. Uh, so uh, the first Eagle Eye um, was launched with... with uh, um, Exolaunch, 
and broker works as an intermediary and, and uh, not just uh, finding clients for, for the um, uh, rocket launches, but also works uh, on tests, on some, some requirements, uh, and so on and so on. So uh, we worked with uh, ExoLunch and now the, the, the second uh, mission next year. Um, that would be uh, with other other uh, broker, but uh, we are also able to communicate directly with uh, SpaceX. And is that collaboration work like? Yeah, is it, it, it works perfectly. Okay, um, perhaps a little bit more of a challenging question. Why should anyone purchase a satellite in Poland? What makes Polish satellites stand out? Personally, the government is, is the major client, military especially, uh, is, is um, uh, very interested in, in, in Polish uh, satellites. But I'm sure that, that uh, bigger companies uh, or big companies could be also potential clients. Telecommunication is, is a big client worldwide. It should be also, I think, possible to, to sell satellites to the telecommunication industry in Poland. Um, but also other companies could be interested, for example, in, in, in um, uh, monitoring their assets from the space. It's, e it's easier, it does not cost so much, actually. Uh, other other uh, companies could be also interested, transporting uh, companies or, or uh, I don't know, utility companies and so on and so on. We can see a lot of details from the space and uh, taking into account long uh, life of satellites in orbits, it's not so expensive mm -hmm. altogether. And do you feel that there is sufficient government investment and focus uh, on this end of Poland's tech development or would you actually uh -huh appreciate more support. Personally, I would, uh, and I think that all our industry would uh, appreciate um, a bigger investment in that industry. And that's not that we just want to, to consume the money, but uh, we should remember that space is one of the, of the engines of um, nowadays present uh, economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that, that uh, we should take uh, really a closer look at that uh, aspect, uh, that um, side of, of, of uh, the business, space business, that it can be an engine for many other industries as well. Indeed, indeed. And obviously spring 2025 is uh, all about Sławos Uznański going into space. Uh, do you personally feel excited about this milestone? Well, yes, yeah, certainly. Um, I think that, that uh, Sławos uh, can do a lot uh, of good PR for the space industry, and it can be also, I think, useful. His mission can be also useful in terms of scientific or, or technological achievements. By the way, we are working with Sławos on mm -hmm. different, different uh, projects, uh, especially on, on um, uh, radiation analysis of, uh, of our uh, elec space electronics, which is a very important aspect of our business. Okay. Jacek Kosiec, thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. Thank you. And we were joined by Jacek Kosiec, Vice President of the Board at Creotech Instruments. Thank you so much for joining us today. I was your host, Marie Cato. And for the latest in regional business, follow us on X and on tvpworld.com. And from all of us at Business Arena, we wish you all the very best in the coming year. Goodbye.